Take your time, Naz. No hurry. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm using my son's dodgy computers. <laughs> sorry, it's okay. Um, I think it's just telling me signs that I need to buy a new computer. <laughs> Yeah, it's better than going through immigration and then telling them, telling that to you. So I, I took my computer through immigration in Heathrow, I think, the last no, time. No, I, I have a Mac. The problem is that the Mac doesn't, the conversion, basically, when you download a W, it, it's just a nightmare. So I, I therefore I took my son's video to present mainly, but yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mess, but hopefully it'll work. Can you see my, my screen? Yeah, my laptop was bomb dusted. And uh, yeah, check for everything known to man. Yeah. And then they kind of said you might want to change it. It's so ancient. Go for it. All yours. So um, I've got two cases, if that's okay, um, yep. to present. Um, so the first one, um, it's um, a 37-week baby, um, 3.2 kilos. Um, um, this was an um, elective section. Um, for maternal request, um, and there was no steroids uh, given because it was 37 weeks. Um, there's increased work of breathing noted since 90 minutes of age, so um, was um, transferred to the neonatal unit and put on high flow of six liters. And because we take part in the surfon trial, which mom agreed to. So for those who don't know the surfon trial, it is surfactant or not giving surfactant to late preterms and early term infants um, if the baby's on CPAP or a questionable subjective increased work of breathing on a non-invasive ventilation, then you randomize them and they get either the surfactant arm or the non-surfactant. So this baby was in the non-surfactant arm, so expectant arm, and you wouldn't give surfactant unless the FIO2 then went above 45%. So, um, sorry. Um, so um, this is um, the, initial images when the baby um, came to the unit. So um, you can see um, uh, there's, this baby was prone initially. So you can see on the R5 and on the R6 as well, and actually the rest of them. Uh, we've lost your audio, Naz. Uh... Um, Me too. On the R6 as well, a very similar picture, um, good plural sliding, uh, just multiple B lines going through and um, A lines also coming through. So kind of a B profile, but also I would say an AB profile. Um, yep, agree. Nearly a long point, actually. And then, um, yeah. On the L5 as well, as you can see over here, um, there is the period looks slightly thickened, um, uh, and um, but it's not the depth is not great. But this is before we discuss a look. So I'm hoping the next ones I do, which I'm attending this week, things are better. Um, but you can see again multiple B lines coming through, and there's some A lines coming through. No sound. Uh, yeah, Naz, we're losing you in between. Have we lost Nas altogether? Uh... Uh, Nas, we can't hear you.
what we might do is just while Nas is logging out and logging back in, uh, I have uh, Dr. Hassoon, uh, who's, are you, uh, do you have a presentation, Dr. Hassoon? Uh, yes, it's just a quick case, uh, not yeah. very interesting, yeah. but just to show you. So, so you can share and that should stop Nas's share. Oh. Um, can you still see my screen, Alok? Yeah, we can see your screen actually. Uh, yep. Okay. So, um, let me just get it back to PowerPoint. No problems. Uh, Dr. Hassoon, uh, Nas has rejoined, so you can do the next one. Is that okay? Sorry, this is really embarrassing. Don't worry, relax. This this is this happens to everybody. I'm just I'm just gonna give the group a little bit of a warning. We were zoom bombed on our last meeting just while Nas is setting up, and uh, I just think somebody's trying to log in who I can't recognize. So just be aware, guys. Uh, at the moment, only I have admitting rights, but yeah. Yep, lovely. Screen is visible. Okay, so um, the R3 and R4, again, very similar, good lung sliding, um, lots of B-lines um, coming through, almost coalescing with each other, um, while R4, again, was very, very similar as well. Um, and then L4, again, um, Again, mainly a B profile coming through over here. Um, the reason I was asking about um, this seems almost like a, a lung pulse kind of. I was just wondering whether it is or it's not. So I just wonder whether you've got an area of atelectasis there. So uh, just, or whether that's diaphragm and you have dropout in I between think, that looks very I dark. It, I thought it was the diaphragm over there and that's why it was so coming out so dark over there and I thought maybe because I was angulating the baby was prone and so if you look at the lower margin of L4 so if you take your arrow go right to the right edge okay now the question is is that the diaphragm there that margin that you see so lower lower than that so yep now if you just trace the way up you have a slight edge there that's visible. Yeah, 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 that, yeah And yeah. the texture there is obviously uh, quite tissue-like. But then yeah. above that, you've got an area where the, the you know, you've got a what what could be what looks like a, a, an area of consolidation with a tissue-like appearance. Now, there are two possibilities here. One possibility is you've got mirror image artifact, and that's why it's giving you that particular appearance. Uh, this is not a lung pulse for me. It's just not quick enough. So normally okay. the lung pulse would be with the heart rate. Okay. So I'm not convinced there's lung pulse visible there. My gut feeling is based on what you presented that that could be a mirror image artifact that you see over there, just at the bottom. And you've got yeah. dropout below the rib, which is giving you a very dark appearance. Yeah. Uh, normally what you'd want to do is, again, you're seeing this in L3, L4. The question is, if you have such a large kind of area of consolidation, atelectasis, you should be able to see it in uh, the L2 region as well. And if you're not seeing it, then the question is whether that's mirror image artifact. The only thing I'd say is the pleura looks a little bit thin. Do you have L1, L2 by any chance? Just no, we, I didn't, no, I didn't turn the baby um, supine, sorry. I didn't no problem. Do so let's just go back through your images. Yep. So, uh, uh, what do you think about the right side, R5 and R6? So, on the right side, um, I thought the um, there was good lung sliding. There was no um, pleural. Um, uh, was, I mean, this lung was sliding. The pleural was sliding well, um, and uh, the margins look quite clear and okay. And yeah, it's like yeah. I would agree. Side. They're a little bit blurred but they look okay. I'm not really convinced you've got subplural consolidations there. And no, I for me, the so. question I'm asking is whether you have a lung point on R5, R6 for a prone baby, because you've got a B profile to the left of the screen and well-aerated rung on the right. 
So like if you play that, I mean, maybe a little bit of a, uh, you know, the R6 basically shows a lung point in between, but yeah. R5, what age was the baby? So the baby was around and around one and a half hour old, two hours. Okay, so that's quite early as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, just in terms of this is classically a situation where I, I'd follow clinical course, I'd be hinging on TTN at this particular point as my possible diagnosis, having looked at all the images. So the question from our perspective is, uh, you could do serial ultrasounds and see how that happens. But my gut feeling so is... We did do serial ultrasounds. I'll take you through the progress. Okay, beautiful. Um, well done. Yep. Um, so this baby continued the same way on six liters and 30% oxygen um, and was an FIT of 30%. So this is on day uh, two. No x-rays, no x-rays, nurse? We didn't do an x-ray. Well we were done. being very brave, Shankar and well I done. were there. This well is done. during well the strike period. This is where you have pure consultants led, only consultant led. So it was um, a bit interesting. Sure. Um, sure. Um, so we didn't do an x-ray. We thought we were happy with it. We thought there was no pneumothorax. This could either be, as you said, TTN or a mild RDS. I must say clinically, I was going with mild RDS because it was an elective section with no steroids, 37 week. Uh, um, but by doing an x-ray, we wouldn't be changing the management for this baby, anything. So we decided opted not to do an x-ray. No, that's fine. The... I completely respect that, yeah. Um, so this is on day two. Um, so this is now this baby's nearly 24 hours old. Um, still didn't see uh, high flow, sorry, in um, six liters um, and 30% oxygen. So this was on R1, R2. Um, and um, just again, mainly a good plural sliding, um, just lots of um, B lines coming through, almost coalescing with each other. Yep. Um, and um, very similar on the L1 as well, over here as well, just multiple, just good plural sliding. Um, maybe a um, little bit of a, a, a little bit of irregular thickening, maybe slightly. Yep. The plural. Um, but again, just lots of deep lines coming through over here. Um, I mean, I, sorry, we didn't do many images at that point. Um, um, but we just did an M on the L2 and essentially it should, um, there was, um, uh, there was no pneumothorax over there. Um, very nice. Very nice. Um, and then in, by around afternoon time, this baby then had increased work of breathing. Um, the gas had a bit of respiratory acidosis. Initial CO2s were sitting at seven. It had dropped down to, I mean, sorry, it had gone up to nine. The FIR2 was still high. Um, uh, I had gone up as well. Um, so it was beyond 45%, which would be the trigger for Surfon as well. So uh, mm -hmm. we gave Surfactant. Um, and um, also this baby then, um, it, it, the FIR2 decreased down to 28% post Surfactant. And then, so we did Lisa and then went up again. So the um, we didn't, by then we had already had ordered an x-ray. So the x-ray showed a left pneumothorax. And post the Lisa? Post Lisa. But post -Lisa. I think it was, it was possibly there before Lisa. Actually, we should have probably done an, we should yep. have done an ultrasound, which we did not do at that point. Um, the and, question that I'd be asking is whether you might have had a pneumothorax, which led to the deterioration before you did the surfactant, that would yeah, be a I, really good point. And uh, this is a, it's a, it's a beautiful uh, case, Naz, uh, in that the any kind of acute changes or deteriorations should be a kind of a trigger, but well done, very good, yeah. Uh, it's, it's actually slightly embarrassing because- No, we, no, 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 this is how you learn. Yeah, this is how we learn, yeah. But anyway, the baby then got intubated, ventilated, and then had a chest strain. So this is the X-ray which shows the Pneumothorax. This is post Lisa, but as you said, I we think that the acute deterioration happened, and possibly the baby had a pneumothorax of that time. So this baby had received one surfactant by this point, and we could yeah. see the pneumothorax on the left side. Um, and this is post the um, chest strain of year. Unfortunately, we didn't do an X-ray. I mean, sorry, we didn't do an ultrasound at this it's point. Right. Yeah, it's, okay. um, it's also a learning, I think, for me as well, not to get affected by people making comments and I should have probably just done it but I don't. Um, 
Um, day three, um, post intubation ventilation, two doses of surfactant now given um, chest strain in situ. Um, and again, very similar to the previous um, ultrasound images, which we had seen before the chest strain actually, but I think they were more or less coalescent, lots of beelines coming through over here in the R1 and, um, and in the R2 as well. Um, and you can see some A lines coming as yep. well. In you can see some aeration there, yeah. Um, and then in, so in R3 as well, again, good plural sliding over here. Again, just B lines coming through over here as well. Um, now you um, do have some element of subplural consolidations or could they be comet tails? Okay, we'll wait till we see all the images, yep. Um, and then in R4 as well, again, good fluid sliding, lots of B lines. I just thought the pre level was irregular. I didn't think there was yep. subdual concentration, but. Yep, I would probably agree. I think that's just a few comet tails that we can see, yep. And then um, L1 as well, um, you could see fluid sliding, um, but again, more of a B profile over there. Um, and then in L2, you could see the lung sliding over here, but there's no yeah. lung sliding over here. Beautiful. Good lung sliding over here. Um, Beautiful lung and, point, yeah. Um, and then so you can wow. see the lung point over there, and then you get a nice barcode sign at that point as well. So this is the chest strain. Now, not it just bubbled initially and then was not bubbling. So I hadn't bubbled basically for 12 hours overnight. But you still could see some amount of maybe a small pocket of pneumothorax, possibly that's what we thought. Um, and then um, on the L3, L4, I just wanted there was some subplural consolidation yep. Yep. over here. And then on the L4 as well, again, good lung sliding, but again, just wanted the subplural consolidation there, um, but just mainly a B profile. Uh, so just L4 again, uh, can you just see that lower region? Can you, uh, so if you go to the lower region of L4, you've got a very sharp triangulated region. Okay, that's the that's diaphragm. Good. Can you see how yeah. dark that region looks? Yeah. Now, again, the question is, is that a mirror image artifact or do you have focal atelectasis over there? Because uh, you've got a tissue sign. Uh, it could be a mirror image artifact, but it's just interesting. You've been now able to demonstrate this twice in the same yeah. region. Yeah. So it does raise the possibility of a, what, what would be an occult lung atelectasis. Now, if and you how have, do you differentiate this? I will go through it today. I will go through it today. I, I think you do have a little bit of lung atelectasis there, and I'll be showing you lots of images. Okay. Um, and that's the x-ray at the point when we did the imaging as well. So we did the x-ray after the imaging because when we saw the pneumothorax still being there and you can see a small pocket yep. over here as well, which possibly correlates with that. Um, this is post extubation um, and clinically there was decreased air entry still on the left side. So R1 again, um, uh, uh, good pleural sliding. It looks a bit thickened and irregular, but I could not see any Subplural consolidation, but uh, multiple B lines going through such. Um, this oh, is yeah, art. Yeah. Lung, getting double lung point. And double lung point as well. And then R3 as well, again, um, looking much better, lung aeration point of view. Um, uh, again, multiple uh, B lines, but maybe an AB profile, I think. Um, and then L to these, it's not very clear, but um, essentially, uh, again, just a few B lines um, going through as such. So we um, we couldn't see, um, sorry, I put L2 more. Um, so with the point where the previous one, where we could not, we had a double lung point over there, it, it's, it now seems to be sliding in a lots of, um, B lines and some comet tails coming down through as well. And even on the M mode, didn't look as if there was a barcode sign over there. Um, 
But interestingly, clinically, there was decreased air entry on the left side. So um, I don't have these images, but Shankar did um, transfers on the uh, on the left side, lower down, and he could. There was at that point uh, no lung sliding over there. But it's it's quite interesting that you have to get um, you kind of have to correlate clinically with yep. the images you're seeing as well. Um, this was the X-ray done at that point. So there's a very slight slither of air sitting yeah, over very there. Small. And what I'd say is because you have the drain in C2, you know, a small amount of air there, it normally takes about 24 hours for air to resolve completely. So you will get air bubbles in situations like this. And actually, some, you know, people sometimes ask, is it safe to take the drain out? Absolutely. Clinically, you know, from your perspective, the only other thing I'd say is very important just to make sure that you don't have any leaks within your drainage system. But yeah, that's a beautiful case. Uh, I'm just keen to get a kind of a feel from the audience. TTN versus RDS, guys. What do we think? You can all come in together. Don't worry. Can I comment? Yeah, Anna, please go for it. Well, in the first scan, I thought it was TTN because there were the lung points and no supleural consolidations. Yep. But then the baby gets worse and uh, some um, um, the B profile gets worse with the white lung yep. and uh, some superal consolidation. So maybe it's a missed case. I would agree it's probably a mixed case. That is the first thought that comes to me is you probably have a baby who's delivered by an elective cesarean. Gestation was uh, NAS? 37 weeks. 37 weeks. 37 weeks. Uh, I mean, just in terms of doing a kind of a, a new ballard, you relatively confidently look termish, not yes, slightly. 3.2 yeah. kilos. Yeah, um, so definitely a good size baby. But a mixed picture clinically in these situations would not be uh, unreasonable to think of. The other possibility, which I think my gut feeling is now, is I think this is RDS as opposed to a pneumothorax because I've seen the x-rays. Uh, and, you know, there is a possibility of having a left-sided pneumothorax, which has made this baby deteriorate and develop a little bit of secondary surfactant deficiency. And the only reason I raise that is because even the subtural consolidations are on the left-hand side. But I think looking at the clinical course in the x-rays, absolutely no doubt, I think this is a mixed case. It's a beautiful case. I, images of very good quality. Uh, I think to start off with, maybe just a few, a little bit of depth on that, those, those images uh, on the, the right side. But I think the rest of it, perfectly interpretable and uh, very, very good. My compliments. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so glad to see how well, uh, you know, you guys are, are being able to do this. Please, you can start with the second case. Yeah. I think one of the good things is that if you think of a baby who is intubated, ventilated, has a chest strain, we've only did four x-rays, that's it. Wow, yep, absolutely. Okay, so um, the second one I just want to talk about is um, another bigger baby, 36 weeker, 1.8 kilo baby. Um, this baby was steroid mature and magnesium mature. Um, was an elective section actually for growth restriction. There was poor growth on the antenatal scan, so they had planned an elective section. It was noted to be um, grunting with increased work of breathing pretty much since birth, requiring CPAP, so with an FI2 of 25%. Um, at one hour of age, um, the scan was done on CPAP in 25%, and then we did a repeat scan at eight hours of age. Um, so I don't have the images of the... Um, first scan. I was there when the images are being done, but um, I think Shankar wants to present them next time. So I'm going to let him no do problems. that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, cool. But this is the um, the R3, R4, as you can see over here, um, just, you know, B columns essentially being there. So if we did a Brad score and literally it was in every, um, every section essentially. So, you know, R1, R2, R3, R4, R1, yeah. L2, L5, everything. So if we did a Brad score, it would have come to 12. Yep. in this baby um, and if we take a breast score and decide that this baby needs surfactant then we with the 12 we would have probably thought about giving surfactant this baby did have increased work of breathing at one hour of age was an fr2 of 25 percent gases were okay so mild respiratory acidosis a ph of 7.2728 with a pco2 of 7 but otherwise you know 
it, yeah. I mean, work of breathing, I think, is very subjective. So there was subcostal intercostal recession, but maybe it was otherwise well at least settled on CPAP. I repeated the x-ray at eight hours. By then, the baby I was in CPAP in air. There was no increased work of breathing. Um, and Beautiful, yeah. If I can get the box to work. Um, and this Anyways. is the R1 over yeah. here. So um, good pleural sliding, mainly and A profile picture, just very few um, B lines coming through over here. Um, but you can see um, a lump point thing over here. Um, and the, over here on the left side is mainly um, an A profile with good pleural sliding, some comet tails coming down over here, while here on this side you can see more um, B lines coming through. Yep. The, so you've got a, a double lung point. Just uh, be careful about the terminology. Yeah. Um, and then on the L1 as well, um, again, good pleural sliding. Um, uh, an A profile with some more B lines coming through over here. Um, and on L2 as well, very, very similar. Beautiful. Uh, can you hear me, Naz? Yes, I can. Lovely. Yeah, very nice images. So again, you've got a double lung point uh, aeration that's visible in the lung. Uh, one of the questions that was asked, I think Margarita has asked that question of the difference between a double lung point and spared areas. Can we just go back to your previous slide? Uh, the, the... This one? Uh, the no, previous one. Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, my apologies. This is this is this case, or yeah, this case. Yeah. So we just go right to the start. Beautiful. Yeah. So really, classically, what you uh, the the difference between a, a double lung point and spared areas is that like here you can see well aerated lung in R one right in the center. So Naz, if you could just put your cursor over it. Yep. Uh, and really what you've got is a, a B profile with B lines right at the bottom of the screen. So what it reflects is a transition of aerated lung. Anterior areas tend to aerate first with a double lung point. Now, if you've basically got uh, multiple areas, R1, which basically show B lines on both sides with an intermittent area of aeration. So you basically got a B profile on both sides. Then the area in between of aeration is called a spared area. And it's just an awareness that spared areas are also described in transient tachypnea newborn. But more importantly, when you have respiratory distress syndrome, if you give surfactant, you can see spared areas as well. And it's not unusual for the improvement phase of respiratory dis mild RDS presents with a kind of a B profile subtural consolidations. But actually, as it gets better, again, you'll have areas of aeration. So you can see a double lung point even in RDS. And you can see spared areas in RDS, but classically the authors have described both these things in relation to trying to describe TTM. But these are beautiful images. I can make really nice interpretation. Your pleura is clearly visible. Uh, there, you asked about lung pulse. Uh, if you look at R1, right at the top, can you see how the pleura changes? It's yeah, it's slightly irregular there. Was this this baby obviously from my perspective has pleura that's visible, but can you see how the pleura jumps up and down? Yes. That is basically lung pulse for you. The question is what's going on below that, and uh, the only question that I have at this particular point is you'd be very close to the thymus, and I just wonder whether the thymus might be coming in there, and the thymus often will pulsate with blood vessels, so you often can get a little bit of artifact there. So I think you probably have a little bit of thymus coming in there in R1, but otherwise you've got really nice aerated lung in the middle with a B profile at the bottom. Beautiful. Uh, what 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 did you think your diagnosis was? So initially with the initial x-rays, which we did, I mean, sorry, the ultrasound, which we did, which just showed go to basically everywhere and columns of B profile it was initially RDS. I mean, clinically we thought it could be RDS or TTN. Um, but the fact this baby recovered so quickly within eight hours, you've got fairly a normal, this, um, it just makes us wonder whether. Did you have subtural consolidations in that first? No, 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 so, literally. 
that would go against the diagnosis of RDS. So if you look at Narvage, I'm not really convinced you've got sub, you've got compact B lines with blurred pleural margin, but I'm not really convinced you have subplural consolidations <laughs> if that's what you're seeing everywhere. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, again, we discussed it. Uh, me and Naz have discussed kind of RDS as well. And for the babies who are slightly older, kind of using a Bratz cutoff of eight would probably mean you'll end up treating a lot of babies who you might get away with. It's really. I think debatable whether you should be using the same BRAT scores from 22 to 36 weeks because of this uh, and because some babies may recover. But again, that's a question that we might ask Nadia. Beautiful images. Thank you so much. So I have Dr. Hassoon who is going to share his presentation next. Um, look, may I start? Yes, please go for it. Uh, the only thing is we can't see your presentation. Are you lovely? Now we can. That's amazing. Thank you so much. So this is 37 week C-section, uh, GBS negative mother um, came to our unit for respiratory distress, started on high flow nasal cannula, FIO2 up to 0.6, and then intubated Cervanta by two hours because of increased work of breeze and high FIO2 requirement. Chest X-ray showing picture of uh, RDS versus pneumonia. We, so we cannot be labeled as RDS nasal pneumonia. And this lung ultrasound is done two hours after Cervanta. After surfactant. Okay. Um, okay. Why not moving? Okay, now. Yeah. This is ju just the X-ray before uh, doing the ultrasound. Yep. And here uh, we'll start by right side R1. Uh, good the plural sliding, send the plura, and there is uh, uh, mostly many B lines coming from the plural side. And uh, on R2. Uh, here the pleura is irregular with uh, some subpleural consolidation with multiple B line. I agree. Uh, yeah. So we'll go to R3. Uh, R3 is just here my question because there is, this is B profile with thin pleura, good sliding, some subpleural consolidation. But here, here we I found this image. So I don't know if we can consider it as a deep is a consolidation or or a vacuole, and yani, I, I didn't have any explanation for this for this image. Yeah, the pleura looks thin. It looks regular. Uh, there's a sliding that's present over there. There's no lung pulse. Uh, it for me, it's not irregular enough to look like a fractal sign. Uh, yes. Again, it, it could be a small. You know, you have an area of atelectasis below the level of the pleura, but sufficient enough to kind of aerate to produce the plural line. That's the only thing I can think. The other possibility is it's artifact. The only reason yes. I, I say it might be artifact or a consolidation is just the horizontal nature of your kind of probe. So if, if, if it's just slightly sloping, the points in favor of a consolidation, if you look just below it, yeah. if you look just below it, take your arrow yeah. just below it. Yeah, that area looks a little bit dense. The question is whether you might, I think if you kind of, had your gain settings up a little bit, you might think those are static air bronchograms, and that's an area of subplural atelectasis with a consolidation. So okay. either is possible clinically, but I don't think that's mnemonic, and I do not hmm. think clinically at this point that's a fractal sign. Okay, this is any what my, I got confused with this one to consider yeah. it as, as consolidation with fractal sign or not. Yeah. Um, so if we look to the R4. Also, uh, pleura is good sliding, many subpleural consolidation, and mostly B line, uh, yeah. B profile. Yeah, beautiful. Here we'll go to yeah. the left side, yeah. L1. Yeah. yeah. Here was, uh, I Absolutely. think this is snowflake sign, no? It is. Uh, what it's classically is uh, you've got subpleural consolidations and you've got microatelectasis from the margin. Uh, you have mm -hmm. a very thin rim of pleural fluid there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which basically is. So it's it's beautiful. I mean, for me, this would be very much consistent 
with a possible diagnosis of RDS, but let's go through all your images. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, L2. L2 here also, pleura is thin, uh, sliding, some B line. Uh, is it How many hours after surfactant was this? Two hours. Two hours after. Okay. Yep. And here are L, L, L3. Also, the pleura is a little bit irregular with uh, some B also line with some A line also. So AB profile and this one. Yep. And the last one. Uh, also, sub here the pleura is also irregular with sub pleura, sick, a little bit sick with sub pleural consolidation and uh, complete AIS, IAS. So, I think this complete B profile. So, this yeah. is what we'll go with RDS. Yeah. Beautiful images, very good quality. Your pleural line here is nice, horizontal. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Now, this is the last one, I think, but it's the same issue. And just we, we have this sub pleural consolidation. Yeah. And I don't know if we, uh, we should consider it here. A, Shred sign or no, shred sign? No, yeah. I wouldn't. I, I will show you a lot of shred sign today. So I wouldn't consider that's just a subcrural consolidation with a little bit of maybe what you call microatelectasis. So okay. uh, shred sign would be deep with a deeper yeah. area of consolidation uh, and classically very irregular margins. This is oh, a subcrural okay. consolidation, a little oh. bit of microatelectasis. You can just see the plural margin dropping back. Yep. So just what my concern was this was image I looked at to I showed to you this one yeah uh, if it is a, if it's an artifact or some we can consider it sort of a shred sign or a fractal sign it, it's not shred sign it's not a fractal sign it's just not irregular enough the pleura mm -hmm. at the level looks relatively thick and intact this sliding again usually with shred sign you know you'll have a very thin rim of what is the parietal pleura with the visceral yeah. pleura completely dragged back, a very irregular margin for the deeper pleural layer. Uh, I mean, the only other thing, like I said, artifact is a possibility because you just have the rib coming there, though the rib gives a very good acoustic shadow. But as you okay. move the slide, I think if you were more horizontal, you okay. might have been able to eliminate, eliminate some of that acoustic shadow, which looks very deep. So okay. what I'd say is that if you're confused, take a few images of that, try to kind of get more perpendicular with your probe. Uh, okay. And the other option, I mean, from your perspective is uh, because the baby is breathing at this particular point, was he ventilated? He is ventilated. He's ventilated. You can't do that. And I put the Doppler. The Doppler was negative. Yeah, yeah. Negative. It's very unlikely to be a fractal sign. But okay, well done. Thank you, thank you your image much. quality, you. you've got a lovely machine, I must say. Uh, just <laughs> one thing that I'd like to highlight. Yeah. You really don't need five centimeters. So the deeper area, which looks a little bit kind of dead, you, yeah, that's my only comment is that you could okay. reduce your depth to about four and that would okay. give you just as much information it would be more than okay sufficient. but okay. otherwise Thanks. very nice images yeah thank you very much my pleasure sir uh kirti yeah one second no problems take your time is my screen visible yeah it is visible so this is a 23 week or six days born at 570 gram no antenatal steroids born in poor condition intubated ventilated since birth on a high he was on high frequency for a couple of days then changed back to conventional and at this point he was six days old on a map of 14 we were on an amplitude of 34 if i would use up to 60 percent also had hemodynamically significant pda in the background so the depth I used was between 3.5 and 4 because this baby is only 23 weeks and I was getting dropout. I have this auto gain in sharp mode and focus I'm not able to adjust because it's auto adjusted. Yeah, yeah. Maximum frequency I have is 8 hertz. I tried to adjust gain further to optimize images. And because I have a linear probe with a large surface area, I used six region approach, anterior lateral and posterior axillary mm -hmm. line. Amazing. The indication for this was rising CRP and increasing pressure requirement on the ventilator. The, so I started with right anterior region. So the pleural line is absent on the left side, thickened on the right. There is pleural sliding. There is consolidation on the left side. B profile underneath it all mostly looks like a C profile. And yep. this I zoomed in on this very area. And this I tried to do in a transverse view. I have a Doppler in the next slide, but it seemed like it was most likely 
when atelectasis bar collapse. I couldn't really get this area. I tried my best to manage the gain, it's, but then it was getting too bright. So I just It's a it. beautiful image. That image on the left side, you've definitely got a C profile. The plural margin is completely uh, not visible. Uh, mm -hmm. It's irregular. Uh, and then what you've got is you've got aerated lung below that. And uh, you've basically got a little bit of yeah. dropout there. And the mm -hmm. reason for that is probably because you're trying to angulate your probe to get a better image higher up. And, okay. you know, sometimes you will get dropout for a variety of different reasons. But uh, what you can do is just take your probe down a little bit, to try and mm -hmm. get a little bit more focus. But this is, yeah, this is classical C profile. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Okay, then this was with the Doppler, and I saw that within the area there wasn't any vascularity. It's more yep. speckled than on yep. the outside. Agreed. And this is again in the transverse view, and this is the zoomed view of right anterior area. Yep. So very nice. We just go back to that. Uh, sorry. It's just beautiful. Sorry, just for teaching purposes. Yeah, sorry. So can I get you all to have a look at the Doppler appearances and just remember the blood vessels that you see at the top, they're actually outside the lung. They're within the superficial subcutaneous tissue. But this actually area where you have the atelectasis, and we're going to talk a lot about this today because there's a lot of controversy based on what's reported in the literature. But simple things are the area of consolidation may well show blood supply, but the area of atelectasis doesn't. So this this does not show any significant kind of blood vessel formation. So beautiful images, Kirti. And again, Kirti, I just want to say, uh, don't worry. I think your probe and the settings that you're using, they're absolutely beautiful for interpretation. So. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, um, this is in the right lateral area. So yep. again, now the plural line is absent on the left side. The thumb thickened over here. Bronx yeah. lining is present. There is a shred sign here. And I think these are dynamic bronchograms with static ones, aren't they? Um, that's what I thought. There's B profile yeah. beneath the consolidated yeah. area. Yeah. I labeled it as a C profile. And with Doppler, there's increased vasculature within the area. And this yeah. I did in the transverse view for the same area. And I thought this was most likely a mnemonic consolidation. Yeah. I would agree. So yeah. just for everybody, uh, if you remember, Dr. Hassoun, can you see how irregular the margins look for that? Very irregular. There is an element here where I cannot see the, the, the irregular margins just coming to the bottom. So if you just want to go to that slide. So the irregularity is right in the center. And can you just see there's a thin, very thin plural line that's visible at the top? Yeah. Just to, Yeah. But even if you come to the middle, just at the top. Yeah. And then no, no. If you come to the middle, just come to the middle. So you have RL. Just come to the bottom. Go to go to RL. Go to RL at the top. Yep. Now you just come down to just below the ribs. Okay. Now what you can see is static air bronchograms below, but the dynamic air bronchograms are just below the rib. Can you see that? The ones that fade in and out. Yeah. They are dynamic bronchograms. This one. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the ones below that are static, just remember. Yeah, okay, so just because not everybody would be able to mm -hmm. just show everybody the dynamic bronchograms, please. Yeah, beautiful, those ones there. So they go in and out. Now, dynamic air bronchograms go against a diagnosis of atelectasis. And you can see a little bit of pleura there. So you've got dynamic air bronchograms in an area that looks very irregular with the distal distal margin consolidated. So what you've got is basically lung that's irregular, that's been destroyed. And uh, when you put Doppler on it, you've got these blood vessels. So we'll just have a look. Yeah, very nicely seen. Oh, I think it's not an auto loop. It's okay, that's beautiful. These are lovely images. And then can we have a look at the one in the transfer section? So you've demonstrated in two planes, which is amazing. This is what we want to get into the habit of doing, demonstrating it in two planes. Beautiful, okay. lovely. Go to your next slide. Then I did it with the right posterior axillary line. Yeah. Again, the plural line is absent toward the left side. There's a shred sign with dynamic bronchogram B profile beneath 
it would come as a C profile if you mark it and the Doppler shows increased vascularity, most likely a mnemonic consolidation. Agree. Was your CRP elevated? Yeah, uh, later on it came back as 25 and the total count was 28,000. And did you grow anything? And so far there's no growth, no growth. but there is some history of maternal infection. She had tachycardia, high CRP, fever. Sure. So sure. maybe. Yeah. Lovely, beautiful images. Yeah. And uh, on the left side, there is again thickened pleural line on the right side, left on. Um, absent on the left side with dual siding present consolidation compact B lines again there is no vascularity within the area here yep. and I thought it was likely atelectasis yep. or collapse yeah and the plural line is not seen at all can I just yeah. go back to your previous slide so when you look at the top of the slide just go to RPAL yeah. So yeah, that thin margin that you see there is parietal pleura. Okay. Yeah, and basically what's happened is the visceral pleura is completely destroyed because you have consolidation. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have intact pleura, that means there's aeration there. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have aeration there, and that's the giveaway is you have dynamic air bronchograms. Mm -hmm. So that's a point that goes on against complete atelectasis. Because if you have complete atelectasis, so if you go to your next slide, can you see how you can't see any pleura there? There's no thin mm -hmm. rim. It's all consolidation. And mm -hmm. that's why, hence, I think you probably have an element of atelectasis there. Now, what is very important, folks, is I don't want you to get too fixated on the differentiation because consolidation with atelectasis often coexist. Really, what you really want to see if you're thinking of mnemonic consolidation is the presence of a fractal sign and if you have dynamic air bronchograms, they go against atelectasis. They are two uh, very sensitive signs. And then some babies don't read the book as I'll show you today, but beautiful images, beautiful. Then on the left lateral, it's mainly a continuous, but still I think this is a distorted plural line or maybe my probe has only eight frequency. Do you want to play it? Different. Yeah, if you just play Sorry. it. Yeah. It looks okay. Looks fine. Okay. I think you just have ribs coming in there, which is why you have okay. that intermittent kind of dropout okay. below the level of the ribs. But that's this is compact B lines for me. Yeah. B lines and it's a B profile. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Then in the left posterior axillary line, this yeah. is again a plural line. But I think this now again is a thin rim, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. As you had mentioned, yeah. which I I've, didn't recognize. No, it's all right. It's okay. The video that I've sent on mnemonic consolidation, have a look at it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Again, yeah. pure sliding present with shred signs, static bronchograms, and compact B lines present throughout the rest of the area. And Doppler shows increased vascularity. Is this also a shred sign? It here? could be. It could be. Uh, or what you could have is it's the lower part of the lung, which, mm -hmm. you know, it. It could be a shred sign because your pleura is very irregular, right in the middle there. Uh, yeah. No, just lower down, lower down. Go to your right, go to your right, go further right, further right. right. Yeah, there, yeah. there. Can you okay. see? It mm. starts over there. Now, the question is is this just one area of lung that's completely rotten? Mm. Some okay. kind of aeration on either side. So mm. I would basically put a Doppler there and see. Okay. But very irregular margins. The question obviously is because your pleura is abnormal, is whether you have a deep consolidation, a deeper consolidation. So if you go down, here, yeah, uh, further down, can you see how irregular that margin is? Mm. So is this just a large area or within the lower lobe, which is irregular, which, you know, basically looks like lung that might be a little bit moth eaten? Okay. So. Putting Doppler there would also help just to see whether it has vessels, but but yeah, this poor kid, yeah, it's got an infective kind of mnemonic vessel. Oh, this I just did for diaphragm analysis. Somehow sure. I did all the measurements, but when I stored the image, none of it came through. But anyway, this is. So my diagnosis was bilateral alveolar interstitial syndrome with atelectasis in the anterior fields, areas of consolidation in the posterior regions. Ooh, this was yeah. the X-ray. 
and the x-ray diagnosis given was bilateral perihilar infiltrates extending into the lower lobes. Just because we wanted to discuss a atelectasis, I've added another slide from a case I presented earlier, which had a more clear atelectatic area. Yeah. And this baby's x-ray was this and on yeah. the right upper lobe. I think this is very similar to what you would see in a baby who's just born, isn't it? Without much aeration. Yeah. So you're right. So basically what you call an alveolar gram where the pleura is not established at all. So I can't mm -hmm. see any pleural line there. It's all irregular with what is this a kind of a C profile. Uh, you then have aerated lung below it with the liver just below. Mm -hmm. So kind of a right upper lobe consolidation collapse is what you're kind of thinking. The fact that you have no established pleural line with a tissue mm -hmm. sign, again, raises the possibility of, uh, you know, uh, an atelectasis. And I think uh, what you've got there in the right lateral is very yeah. clear. I cannot see any pleural line at all. I can't see a pleural this was, line. Okay, this was just from a case early on where I don't have enough gain and it's not- That's all right, that's beautiful. So again, it's to kind of say to everybody that you can make interpretations. You've got static air bronchograms within that with no pleural line with what looks like a tissue sign with aerated lung below that. So absolutely beautiful. Is this saved? Because I, I, I missed this case. Yeah. It's saved. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's, uh, I think, the sixth case. So it was way early on. I see. Okay. okay. Lovely. Beautiful. Thank well you. done. Uh, just, uh, can we just go back to your last set of slides very quickly? Just so that I can make a note here. Yeah, that's fine. I've got that. Lovely. Okay. So, Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Uh, we've got Sujit and then Margarita. Hi, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. Uh, let me, I'm just going to try this slightly differently. Let me just see if this works. Uh, can you see this? Can you yeah, see this? Slide? We can see this very nicely. Okay, yeah. fine. Uh, <clears throat> so, Apologies that there are I mean my friend's place and there's a birthday party which have sort of peeled off. So apologies if you, if you hear kids running around and it's noisy. It's so okay. this is a 23 weeker who is three weeks old with a background of severe chronic lung disease, ventilator dependence, um, who was in about 40 to 50 percent oxygen uh, and um, uh, was complicated with uh, acquired CMV, which caused worsening re worsening respiratory status. Um, which is one of the reasons why I scanned this baby. This baby also is known to have a small PDA with left to right flow subsystemic pulmonary pressures. And so the lung ultrasound was done due to worsening respiratory status. Um, and from a microbiology point of view, there was acinetobacter isolated from the endotracheal tube secretions. So I scanned using a hockey stick probe, uh, uh, 8 megahertz. So, uh, uh, so R1, R2... Uh, you can see, so so we can see a logbook. I can't see your presentation. Ah, okay. So that's not right. Let me, uh, sh let me see if I can share. What you might have to do is save the presentation to your desktop and yeah, now I can. Can you see your, the presentation now? Yes, we can see the presentation. Okay. okay. Um, so sorry. So, uh, no worries. Okay, so so you're looking at R1, R2. Yeah. Uh, so so the pleural line is thin. Uh, it does look interrupted. There is pleural sliding, but then towards you're sort yeah. of moving out. So there is absence yeah. of pleural line, um, uh, which sort of makes me wonder if there is a undergoing atelectasis. Yep. Uh, probably a collapsed consolidation. I don't know. Deeper down, you're seeing some sort of dense consolidated areas. Yep. I agree. Uh, moving on uh, to the uh, R1, R2, so the picture on the right-hand side. So again, uh, thick, interrupted pleura. Uh, I can see a hint of A line, but it's predominantly B lines, and you're seeing subpleural consolidation with which you're seeing B lines coming all the way down to the bottom of the uh, image. Yeah. So uh, just going yeah. back to R1, R2, so it's a beautiful image. Can I just, for teaching purposes, just let yeah. the colleagues know. So I do think that's atelectasis because the pleural margin is not established. 
it gives a very hyperdense kind of a tissue sign. Now, in the middle of that, what you can see is you can see these parallel. Can you see that parallel white line that runs? Just so there's one there, and the, can you see that? So that is a static air bronchogram. They're classically described in large focal consolidations, and they 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 favor usually a diagnosis of atelectasis if if it's present. What is called as focal consolidation with atelectasis. So it's a very nice image. Please carry on, sir. Yeah. And moving on, so R5, R6. So there's a large area of lung breakdown, which looks like a large red sign, which I have magnified uh, on the right image. So you're seeing dynamic air bronchograms. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then, Beautiful. Uh, yeah. down, you're seeing sort of uh, air moving in and out. So uh, a large shred sign. And I think this is a fluid bronchogram here. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Uh, and um, with lung pulse. And what I've then done is color compare, putting oh. color on it, and it is glowing. Yeah. Yeah. There's quite a lot of vascularity to that. Yeah. Yep. And you can again see, uh, so the dynamic air bronchograms coming yep. in and out yep. with lung pulse, yep. um, with lots of vascularity and lung pulse, yep. which is in keeping with the mnemonic uh, change on that right lower side. Yep. Uh, and on the left side, uh, so the left side, there is again a uh, thick uh, sort of pleura, which there are some pleural consolidations that you can see. Um, and a faint uh, sort of A line that I can see, but predominantly B profile, um, moving to L3, L4. Uh, again, good plural sliding, thick, irregular, predominantly B profile. Uh, and uh, in L5, L6, uh, there's good plural sliding, predominantly B profile uh, seen. So this is what the chest X-ray looked like. Yep. Uh, this change is seen bilaterally. And so the lung ultrasound findings, what I found was there was thickened, irregular pleura, pleura yeah. um, absent pleural lines with static air bronchogram in R1 and R2, subpleural consolidations, R5, R6 showed a large fetch sign with lung pulse, dynamic air bronchogram, fluid bronchograms, increased vascularity, predominantly B profile. Yep. And so conclusion was pneumonia in this ex preterm infant with severe yep. chronic lung disease, ventilator dependence on the background of CME pneumonitis. Yep. Uh, CRP, just curious. So the CRP was 21, uh, uh, yep. Alok. Sadly, sadly, this baby died uh, because we were having difficulty with oxygenation and yeah, was that was that tricky. That's a, I'm sorry to hear that, but uh, we'll just go back to your images, Sujit, because they're beautiful. Uh, so we'll go back to the right side of We'll just stay at this one, the R5, R6. So I, are you able to play it? Yeah. So, I mean, clearly what you can see is static with dynamic air bronchogram. So deeper down, you have the static kind of bronchograms. And then you've got these dynamic air bronchograms higher up, which are moving in and out of the lung. And now this is where I'd like to say, guys, this is no doubt a mnemonic consolidation that's visible with lots of blood vessels. As you go distally, as you go distally, so just below the rib margins, I cannot see, I can see a plural line higher up. So if you just go to the left, go to the left, can you see how your plural line, so there's a plural line there, yeah. there, and then it completely disappears. Okay. And there's not much vascularity distally. And this is where I'd say to you that mnemonic consolidation often exists with atelectasis. There is probably an element of atelectasis there. Yeah. Which coexists. And this is why I don't want you to get too fixated on trying to differentiate them too much. My, my take home message is that really when you're looking at atelectasis in situations of like tubes, or you're looking at atelectasis in the kind of context of lung that you can recruit, those are important situations where you're kind of trying to make a diagnosis because you want to improve ventilation. But this is barn door, absolutely barn door mnemonic consolidation. You've got dynamic air bronchograms, which are coming in and out. And that's why I would say, think common, think big, and that'll give you your most important diagnosis. Don't get it too much into the intricacies of, you know, is this, am I 100% sure there's no atelectasis versus what is barn door? 
uh, the dopplers are absolutely beautiful and uh, again you can see characteristically how the vascularity is actually increased from uh, as as you go from the deeper part of the lung where the consolidation is the vascularity just diminishes as you go right to the edge of the lung so it's very very nice image and you've got lung pulse as well lovely uh, is this the case the one case you're presenting uh, i just have the one uh, um for beautiful. now beautiful that's yeah. fine that's beautiful it's a lovely case it's an absolutely lovely case thank you so much thank you Margarita, go for it. Can I ask something while Margarita is getting ready? Yeah. I had, there was a similar case like that, a baby with CLD and there was increased vascularity, but the CRP came very low and I thought that could it be that vascularity was increased because of healing? Maybe the tissue is getting healed? Yeah, so very good. Few differentials for that. So first of all, not all pneumonias will give you high CRPs. If you're not bacteremic, you may not get a high CRP with an early pneumonic presentation, especially with BPD. We, get, we often get babies who may be incubating infection at the start of infection, who are developing a shred sign where you haven't had enough inflammatory response to cause the CRP to go up. That's one possibility. The other possibility is, look, shred sign in itself in isolation for a small area with BPD is not unknown. And again, it's clinical correlation. I think if you had a baby that was sick, who's deteriorating, absolutely no doubt, you know, that would favor the clinical presentation of a mnemonic consolidation. But let's say you've kind of given or a baby's had an infection, completed antibiotics. Ventilation induced lung damage can also produce similar appearances and you may not get a high CRP. And there's a huge amount of overlap in extreme preterms in particular who've been ventilated for long periods where you'll often see signs like shred sign. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's where I say clinical correlation is absolutely key. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Margarita. Okay. Uh, yeah. do, you, do you see my screen? Uh, not yet, no. Uh, what should I do? So share. You've got a share screen at the bottom, a green button. So okay. if you press that green button, okay, it should bring up your laptop screen. Okay. Lovely. Yeah, that's beautiful. Now I can see your screen. That's amazing. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Okay, this is um, an outborn that was born because uh, the, uh, a the, the starts the, the labor and was a placental abruption. The mother was in shock. She did the only one, one dose of beta metazone. And we, she, she was born with 27, 985 nine, 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 uh, grams. She was ventilated and she's, uh, okay. And these two doses of surfactant. She was ventilated, but she was extubated on second day of life and she was in non-invasive ventilation, 21, very nice. And then she starts to, with, with uh, two weeks, start to, to get worse. Yep. She do, Okay, and uh, this was uh, uh, this gaze, uh, ga uh, gazometry, the, the gaze and the uh, venous gazes with the set pH set. She was on diuretics already and she yeah. was uh, hippo. Okay, so uh, the indication because she was with, uh, she had a, a progressive respiratory worsening. And the question was a night like disease, a pneumonia, or a BPD evolution? Yeah. She was. She was supine, and now I I use a, a Siemens a Qsun, a linear probe with with a setting for neo lung and a depth of three point five. Uh, because these babies are small, and the linear probe is big. Most of the time, I use uh, just one, two, three, three, four, and five, six together. Because if I push up and down, it's almost the same. Yep. So beautiful. So this is a this is a, a, a thick uh, course interrupted uh, pleural line sliding, uh, and then I think it's a small shred sign with a small consolidation here, and the coalescent V lines. Okay, so yep, uh, you. I mean R one in the it's yeah the you're in R one at the moment. You've got thymus at the top. So basically, uh, I 
can just about uh, what we're seeing is the upper half of the image. So when we, it's it's a beautiful image uh, because you've got the thymus, you've got a little bit of an effusion there. I just wonder, uh, and a little bit of fluid around the thymic capsule. But yeah, I would agree that you've definitely got an irregular pleural line at the top. Now, the question from our perspective is: that a shred sign or is that atelectasis? So, what day of life are we? Oh, uh, yeah, we were, sorry, I didn't- Day two? It. No, no, we, it was, she had, um, sorry. Uh, she had 32 days of life. 32 days of life. Okay, that's fine. So kind of, that's really helpful. That could be a shred sign. Yes, uh, I'd be very keen to kind of see what Doppler appearances were like. Sorry? Were, were we able to do any Doppler there? Oh, I didn't. Here, I no. didn't do it. No. Don't worry. Okay. It's okay. That's not a problem. But it could be a possible shed sign. Yeah. The, could be compressive atelectasis because of the effusion as well. But yeah. Okay. These are, are it's a bit uh, lower here. And I think these, these small images, it corresponds a bit to the beginning of this one. It's it's a small. I didn't know if we, I could call, call her a, a supleural consolidation, supleural, or just a a shred sign here or not. Okay. My gut feeling is now that I've seen R1, R2 and you do not have any effusion there. I, I think what you've got is you've got thymus coming in and what you see that hypoechoic area around the thymus is actually fluid in the thymic capsule. It's not yeah. a pleural effusion. Yes. That is basically thymus with fluid in the thymic capsule. Below that, you've got the right upper lobe and you definitely have pleura that's established lower down, but then you've got a very regular area that could be a subpleural consolidation, which is quite quite an extensive one and a possible shred sign that looks very regular. The thing is you lose a little bit of pleura, pleural mine at the top, just there. And then the question is whether it's associated with a little bit of electricity, but yeah, I would be very suspicious of whether that's a shred sign. Yep. When I come to R1, R2, again, you've got a very nice machine. Uh, you're losing a little bit of depth uh, just at 3.5, what frequency are you using? 10. Yeah. Yeah. So that's beautiful. You've got an image of R1, R2 at a frequency of 10. You could bring it down a little bit just to get a little bit better, deeper image. But uh, what do you think about this image? Good yeah, noodles. It has, it has a, a thick course and sliding pleura. Yeah. Some, some, some B lines, the predominance of B lines with some A lines underneath. And yeah. here we have a supleural, probably very a good. Supleural Beautiful. Yeah, very nice. Yep, I would agree. Yeah. Okay. Here it's it's the same, but okay. This has a, a thick sliding pleura. Yep. And with some A lines beneath the B lines. R5, R5, uh, R5, 6. I think it's it's also the same pleural, a thick pleura. With yep. sliding, some supleural consolidations. Yep. Small ones here yep. and yep. here. And, okay. Completely. Again, okay. In the left side, yeah. there's a course in interrupted, in interrupted sliding and some supleural consolidations, maybe here. Yep. Here. Yeah. And here, there is a, a consolidation, I think, with. I think they are regular borders. And I think it's 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 best to see in the next image, this image here. We can see uh, static bronchogram, I think. Yeah. Okay. And then I, I tried to put the the doppler, but uh, I think it's too much uh, the velocity. If it's if I go up, it could get all all colorful. Yeah. And I'm not sure that this is from the. Should I diminish or improve uh, or get, improve the gain of what, the call? You're just seeing what I call a speckling at that particular point. And yeah. what you could do is you could try and reduce your color scale a little bit. Reduce. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But that's when a very... I reduce it, I, I think it, it will disappear a bit. That's fine. So that would go against the vascularity. The plural line in the middle is not established, but yeah, I would agree it's very irregular, but then you've got these static air bronchograms. Yes, down here, yeah. right? And they're parallel. 
Can you see how parallel they are? Uh, it, it's, it's, it, has, it has a long sliding, also, um, a long pulse here, I yeah. think. It... Yeah. yeah. So for me, the question I'm really asking is that an area of atelectasis? Probably. I think yeah. He... yeah. So it's also because of the nature of the, the, the air bronchograms that you get that I'm going to talk to you mm -hmm. about today. Yeah, they're they're parallel to each other. They're not punctate. So, yeah. Uh, again, you can never be completely sure. And that's what I would say is that differentiating a shred sign in this situation can be incredibly challenging. For me, the important thing is I cannot see a plural margin there at all. So, yes, I yes. just... Uh, what was your CRP? It, it was negative. Yeah, so my gut feeling is you have evolving BPD in this baby. Yes. And okay. you probably have an element of lung atelectasis, uh, which is contributing to work of breathing. Uh, were you on uh, non-invasive uh, ventilation? She, she's in non-invasive ventilation, yes. She was in CPAP, then in B-level, and she was worsening. And I repeated the, the scan uh, two days ago. And without antibiotics, and these has disappeared. Yeah, beautiful, amazing. Do you have the repeat scan? Uh, yes, I have a bit. Uh, I, 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 yes, I have in the slides. If you want to, I okay. show. Okay. So I try to do it like this. Yeah. Thick and irregular pleura with sliding all observative flank fields, red flank small consolidations in R1, superior consolidations in R5, 6. Left lung large consolidation with regular border static air bronchogram and pulse in L5-6 and the superior consolidation L1. IS profiles with few islands in all lung fields. DPB evolution with a B consolidation probably collapse at like disease, negative infection problems, great vitality. That's amazing and uh, beautiful images. Can I just say that, I mean, all the images that you guys have shown today are absolutely amazing. Margarita, are you able to present the follow-up yes, scan? Yes, I, I put it in the next one. Okay. Okay. That's great. Okay, we did something like this. I, it's very um, controversial between us in our unit, but she was getting old, she was getting worse, and so we did the next metasome. And these are the images. After that, now she has much, she's, get, she's on 21%, still in CPAP. But she has much. Uh, it's a. It's a, it, She has then um, much uh, 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 air. Uh, more hair in the in the lung here and here and uh, here. These images. It's a bit. I think the 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 probe is too tilt. But okay. Yeah. I did but, a transverse. Good aeration. Here. Yeah. Good aeration there. Yeah. Yes. Here it's a transverse scan because I was on doubt in something. Then I try a transverse to see if there is a superior consolidation or not. And here it yeah. is. Yeah. But again, the plural is intact. Can I just emphasize again that the difference with atelectasis, if you have it, the plural should yes. disappear completely. So this is a subplural consolidation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We see all the plural all the time. And it's quite thin to what she had before. And can I just everybody asks me what a deep consolidation is. So can you yeah. see in the transverse view how you can trace it all the way down to three centimeters? So that, that is what you call, so, you know, people sometimes get confused and they talk about deeper areas, which are patchy on the scan, but when it does not originate from Plura. Now, unless it originates from Plura, you can't call it a deep consolidation. Now, theoretically it doesn't mean there's no consolidation, it just might be that the angle in the view in which you're seeing that image doesn't meet the plura, but this is a very nice example of a consolidation that extends with its depth quite into the depth of the lung. So beautiful images, Dr. Margarita, my compliments. It's L5, L6, that was where there was the big consolidation. This image is not good because she was moving a lot and it's, it, it's very uh, up, so the, the probe is big and we can't see it, but I, we think I, I could see the entire uh, pleura and here it was L6 down that's here there is here a lot more much more here and here there have to be lines but no no consolidation okay I think it's, it's this okay that's beautiful thank you so much thank, all thank beautiful you. cases very very good images I think for learning I mean this is probably one of the best sessions that I've uh, I have attended for my own learning and uh, I, I'd just like to congratulate everybody who shared cases today. I cannot 
uh, you know, uh, feel more happy about the progress that I'm seeing with all of you. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, what I am going to do is uh, I'm going to share my screen very quickly. Is my screen visible and am I audible? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. So, what I'm going to talk to you today about is uh, atelectasis, the different terminologies, why there is there's a huge amount of, I would say, disparity in how people tend to describe consolidation, collapse, and lung atelectasis. And I think the key thing to emphasize is that I don't know in the literature why we haven't kind of had a sit down. And I think, you know, there might be an opportunity to do that to kind of say, well, should we be trying to describe and give standard terminology? Because really what it has done is it, it creates a little bit of confusion amongst learners. And in particular, what I'd say is that if you read purists uh, and you read about consolidation versus collapse and atelectasis actually at least for us uh, and those of us who've trained in india and in britain kind of consolidation would kind of be the exudative fluid in the alveolus or transudative fluid in the alveolus so a fluid filled alveolus whereas atelectasis or collapse would kind of mean that you don't have aeration uh, in that particular alveolus which results in the alveolus completely collapsing so the terminology and using it kind of uh, synonymously gets a little bit confusing in that the problem with kind of consolidation and collapse is you don't actually have any consolidation and collapse that are separate to each other. I think if you have consolidation, there will be areas that are not aerated and the alveoli will be collapsed. Uh, and that's where I would say that lung ultrasound often demonstrates a mix of both of these things, which kind of creates a lot of confusion in that people are trying to kind of diagnose whether this is atelectasis and collapse. And for me, the take home message from all of this is do not get too fixated on trying to determine that because it can be incredibly difficult. For you, what's important is doing clinically correlating, looking at your clinical findings. And the most important other aspect is then doing a full comprehensive scan of all the regions where clinically possible, where the baby is stable to try and then make an overall diagnosis mental modeling to kind of say, well, this is what I think the diagnosis is likely to be. And descriptors, you know, can vary a little bit between individuals and that's the subjectivity of the interpretation. But just starting with atelectasis, you know, when we, we talk about it, it's basically a collapse of alveolar units. Uh, we've kind of described atelectasis on chest X-rays by looking at what I would say is areas of opacification, which are usually well-defined, uh, often have a sickle-shaped margin, but are associated with uh, a reduction in kind of intercostal spaces, uh, often ipsilateral kind of pull of the mediastinal structures in the heart towards them, uh, and then hyperinflation of the contralateral kind of areas of the lung, which do uh, and are aerated. Clinically, the presentation could be one of increased respiratory distress with uh, increasing ventilation or oxygenation needs. And what I'd say is that none of these signs are actually very specific to the diagnosis of collapse or atelectasis on its own. Now, if, if you just look at the radiological appearances, these are a variety of different radiological appearances. So what you've kind of got at this particular point is uh, a right upper lobe consolidation over here with a tube that's in the right place. Now, whether that tube was maybe a little bit low and is being pulled back and that's persisted, or whether this consolidation is because there's an infective element, we don't have the history over here uh, to kind of be able to clinically correlate. And that's that's really, really important. But here you have, uh, you know, a tube that's probably T1, T2, probably T3, maybe a little bit low with a complete right-sided, uh, I would say, atelectasis, uh, consolidation, collapse, uh, 
your guess is as good as mine. What I would definitely say is that there's no mediastinal shift. Uh, the line is in the heart. And, you know, the debate then clinically from our perspective is what is going on on that side? And that's where I would say lung ultrasound can really help. On the other hand, what you can see over here again is rib crowding with what is not clear cut or pacification. So you don't have a whiteout, but definite hyperinflation of the other lung. So again, the question is what is happening on this side? I mean, is there a collapse consolidation on this particular side? Or is this hyperinflation, which is causing the mediastinal shift because there's something wrong with this left lung? And I'd say that lung ultrasound actually is much more sensitive in the diagnosis of atelectasis than as compared to a chest X-ray. Now, these are just other examples of kind of neonatal atelectasis, which I'm going to skip. But this is a tube which has kind of gone down the right side of the bronchus. And again, what is important is you can often get complete opacification of the left side because the left main bronchus is completely occluded. Now, when you do a lung ultrasound, often the expectation if you have a low tube is that it'll be the right-sided lung, which is consolidated. But if you have, uh, sorry, uh, atelectatic, but if you have kind of a left-sided atelectatic uh, appearance, you can see a lot of rib crowding on this particular area, the tube could still be down the right-sided bronchus. Uh, and just including the left main bronchus. And it's not unusual for sometimes, if you give time, this right side will also collapse. But what I would say to you is that while you're performing a lung ultrasound, you can get appearances like that. And in particular, if you get them in the right upper lobe, or if you get extensive collapse consolidations in a baby who's suddenly deteriorating, please go back and first look at your tube. Uh, imp improve the the kind of depth of your tube and weight plus six is a very good formula for babies above a kilo. And then really what I'd be saying is you really want to see if you're going to recruit lung uh, and that appearance changes over a quick period of time with a recruitment maneuver because that is then reversible atelectasis for you with a uh, kind of improvement. Chest x-ray has a lot of problems. So if you, if you look at a study that's been done by Dr. Liu and his colleagues on 80 uh, babies with uh, clinically confirmed symptoms of kind of ventilationary needs that were going up uh, versus 50 controls. And of these 80 cases, 60 of them had lung ultrasound, 20 had kind of uh, CT. And when they looked at the sensitivity of uh, lung ultrasound versus chest X-ray, uh, lung ultrasound had a higher sensitivity. Chest X-ray only confirmed 75% of cases of atelectasis. In fact, there were lots of cases of occult atelectasis which were detected on lung ultrasound, which were subsequently missed. Now, as I said, if you look at the sensitivity of the lung ultrasound, which they, they also did in the 20 cases who had CT scans, it was about 100%. Whereas, uh, you know, the pickup rate and sensitivity for chest X-ray was just 75%. The specificity for diagnosis of atelectasis was also 100% if they were large areas of consolidation with atelectasis kind of demonstrated. Overall, there was a lot more information that could be provided by lung ultrasound, which included the regions where the, the focal areas of collapse or atelectasis were. Uh, they also helped with kind of referencing treatment uh, in that uh, when they used uh, increased respiratory kind of parameters, they were able to recruit in those areas of atelectasis disappeared. So there's a lot more information that you can get about the, the region in which atelectasis is. You can see a recruitment maneuver in real time using lung ultrasound with kind of reversal of the atelectasis as Margarita has beautifully kind of demonstrated today uh, as compared to a chest X-ray where not only will you have subject the baby to radiation, but can you just imagine the amount of handling in a baby who might not be stable, uh, lifting the baby, opening the incubator doors to kind of get the, the X-ray plate in which can't go through the windows of the incubator. There's a lot of handling. Now, how do we make a diagnosis of atelectasis? And in particular, the question then comes, well, how do we differentiate this from pure consolidation? Now, I think what is very, very important is that the primary basis for diagnosis of any case of neonatal lung atelectasis is the presence of a C-profile. <clears throat> and when you look at consolidations that are clearly seen with pneumonia, say, for example, you have consolidations that are visible in seen in focal areas, but which have very irregular margins. They're not very clearly demarcated. 
those irregular margins uh, may then have areas of what I would say is tissue breakdown, which presents as a fractal sign. Whereas if you look at just atelectasis with consolidation, you'll have areas that look like a consolidation with a tissue sign, but which have very, very clear demarcated borders. They'll give you a kind of a triangular kind of a shape. Uh, they'll be present in focal areas. What has also been described is the typical parallel pattern. And you've seen numerous cases of that today. I'll also show you some cases. So when you have an atelectasis uh, in particular, uh, the plural margin, if there's no aeration, will, will not be visualized. But what you'll have is these, these air brokerograms, which kind of are parallel to each other. And that's really because when you have atelectasis, you have air that's trapped. It kind can't kind of move in and out like a dynamic air bronchogram because there's no air entering in, but it's trapped and it's in one place. Now, if you have a significant area of lung atelectasis with absence of pleura with no aeration, then actually because air can't come in, you cannot have lung sliding. And that means that this, this, this area, this focal area, if it's relatively near the heart, will then pulsate and will pulsate with the heart rate. And that then means that you have lung pulse. We've already mentioned pleural line abnormalities. Now, what I'd say is you don't have to have all of these together to make a diagnosis of lung atelectasis. Really, the presence of a consolidation is the primary finding. And when I say consolidation, you must understand that when Daniel Lichtenstein described uh, in the Blue Protocol kind of consolidation, he didn't necessarily differentiate consolidation secondary to mnemonic consolidation versus consolidation secondary to atelectasis. Uh, so really the way we're demarcating them is by pattern recognition. And that's where the remaining features then come into account. In fact, when you look at Daniel Lichtenstein's kind of description of atelectasis with consolidation, they found that virtually all cases, more than 80% of them had lung pulse. But I want to emphasize to you that actually, depending on the position of that zone of atelectasis proximity to the heart, this in J. Lu's study that we've just seen of the 80 cases, only 60% of cases actually presented with a lung pulse. So you may not get these two things, air bronchograms in a typical parallel pattern. You might just get static air bronchograms with a, with a kind of a pattern. But the reason I mentioned this typical parallel pattern is because when you have a typical parallel pattern in situations like this, Atelectasis seen with RDS that I will demonstrate to you tends to have punctate air bronchograms as opposed to the parallel pattern. Now, when we, when we classify neonatal lung atelectasis, J. Liu uh, in his textbook, as well as in their study, basically defined a form of lung atelectasis which is not visualized on chest X-ray. And these are called occult lung atelectasis. And really what we know is that small areas of lung atelectasis as you might see, and you've seen today, might not be picked up on chest X-ray because they're too small or the angulation of the radiological images, the position of the baby being supine means that you can't actually get enough exposure to be able to reveal them. And that is why lung ultrasound is much more sensitive and specific in the diagnosis of neonatal lung atelectasis. Obviously, you may get visible neonatal lung atelectasis that's visible on a chest X-ray, and these can be focal or large in a particular area. Now, they are often larger and more well-defined as compared to the, the occult kind of uh, neonatal atelectasis, which often is regional, small, with a very small distribution, and so small that you often don't see lung pulse with it. But clearly, what I'd say is that there are two important aspects that we, we should be thinking of. And that, that is visible lung pulse is not seen in all cases of atelectasis. And if you have complete atelectasis, and I'm just giving you an example here, that this is assuming we know what this is at this particular point of time. If this is complete atelectasis and there's no aeration of lung, then really what you're not going to be able to see is an established pool line on ultrasound. And this, this we have seen a lot of today where you cannot see an established brutal line at all because there's absolutely no aeration. Now, if there's no aeration and you don't have an established brutal line, then the atelectasis will kind of rock and roll with the heart because of transmitted pulsations. You will not have any lung sliding. So these are just a few of the features, but having kept this in mind, you know, these kind of features, the, the one other thing that I think is really, really important 
And I would say that if you're looking at right-sided collapse consolidation, right-sided atelectasis, look at displacement of the heart. If I'm getting a, a kind of a, a heart shadow that's coming onto the right side with what looks like an area of uh, you know, uh, consolidation, which has no pleural margin, which is very sickle-shaped and which is quite large, then actually that is gonna support my diagnosis of consolidation with collapse or what I would say is complete atelectasis in that particular point. On the left side, we do find heart, so it becomes a little bit more difficult, but if the heart is completely displaced to the right, well, that's made a sternal pull for you. Now, I'm just showing you an image over here, and this is a comprehensive image of the lung with the cranial end here and the foot here. Now, what you can classically see at this particular point is normal aerated lung at the top towards the head. And then you have this area of aeration followed by an area which is extremely irregular, which is so irregular, but with a plural line that's established. It's very irregular. So this consolidated lung with irregular margins at the bottom, and this is actually a fractal sign. But as you move right down to the bottom, can you see how you've got a plural effusion and this plural effusion is causing what is called compressive atelectasis. But can you see how sickle shaped the margin is? Now, compressive atelectasis is very different to focal subplural atelectasis, and it is there because of a plural effusion. And often where you have the consolidation, and this is really important, people talk about atelectasis not having dynamic air bronchograms. But really, when you have compressive atelectasis, you can have dynamic air bronchograms coming in from the, the consolidated area of lung that's aerating into the collapsed area of lung. And you can see that over here. You can see dynamic air bronchograms come in and out just at the bottom, just over there. So there are differences in how you interpret compressive atelectasis from subplural focal or occult lung atelectasis. And I want to clear this right at the beginning. You'll have pleural effusions which will cause compressive atelectasis and they're much easier to make a diagnosis because you can actually see the parietal and the visceral pleura. You can see the sickle shape margin of the lung. You may be able to see deeper consolidation. As you can see, this is a mnemonic consolidation. And actually towards the distal part of the lung, you can clearly see dynamic air bronchograms come in and out. So just be careful of terminology. And the terminology kind of is that you need to look at the area of atelectasis to be able to kind of make a determination of whether air bronchograms are static or dynamic. Now, the reason you're seeing dynamic air bronchograms over here is because this area of lung is consolidated. And basically what you've got is a distal area of aeration from the consolidation into lung that is atelectatic. But actually, if you look at the atelectatic lung to the distal end, there are no dynamic air bronchograms going through it. So again, fixation on terminology and how you interpret things, you don't want to get too confused. Now, let's, let's talk about this image. So, so Anna, I'm going to ask you to interpret this image. What would you like to know? Hi. Um, can I describe the image or? Do you want any information before you describe the image? Uh, the uh, brave history of the baby. Lovely. So this is a 24-week baby who, from my perspective, has was intubated, ventilated, had two doses of surfactant, was actually in air for the first 48 hours, was honeymooning uh, on antibiotics uh, with a normal CRP. And uh, at about 72 hours, my FiO2 has gone up to about 30, 35% gradual increase. So before doing a chest X-ray, I have decided to do a lung ultrasound. And this is the lung ultrasound as you can see it. I'm just gonna take my laser pointer off. Um, sorry. So I, I can see the bed sign. I can see the pleura that is sliding and with some B lines and some uh, A lines. And yeah. in the left, uh, I can see the plural line. And I, uh, there is no plural line there. Yep. 
and uh, I think these are the static hair bronchograms and the tissue-like uh, appearance on yeah. the right upper. Yeah. How would you describe these hair bronchograms? Are they punctate or are they linear? Linear. Okay. And are they a little parallel or are they pinpoint? I think they are a bit parallel. Okay, so versus kind of, is there any feature of a shred sign here? No. Can you see any plural line over here? No. So do we think that lung is aerated? No. Okay. Uh, let's assume we've done the rest of the ultrasound and you've got a very simple aerated B profile. So kind of, this is nearly like a double lung point. You've got aerated lung at the bottom with a B profile over here. So in terms of kind of diagnosis, like what are you thinking? Maybe there is an atelectasis in the upper wall of the lung. Uh, okay. I would just check the tube. Lovely, beautiful. So you're absolutely right and the tube was, was low. So, you know, this baby was about 750 grams and, you know, our, our, our tube was about seven and a half at this particular point. So it's, it's, it can be as simple as this. And then let's have the next image. Okay. This is actually technically the same baby. My apologies. I've just magnified the image. And so what I've done is this image that I picked up. And then what I've done is try to focus in on this zone. So can you see how sickle shaped kind of triangular it looks? little bit more located parallel kind of air bronchograms coming in. Okay, what about this? What do we think about this? So I'm gonna get uh, Dr. Hassoun, would you like to comment on this? Um, yes. Um, I think this is Glansver's uh, view. Yeah. We don't have the bad sign. Okay, um, very good. Plural uh, sliding is sliding is uh, totally, and I don't see the irregularly. I don't see the plural line. Maybe there is some part on parietal part. Maybe this is any more more probably consolidation. There is air bronchogram. Some of them are static and some of them are dynamic. Beautiful. So probably mixed uh, atelectasis with consolidation. So which part is atelectatic? So I'm just going to put my highlighted. Is this atelectatic or is this mnemonic? Yes, it's look like atelectatic, this one. Uh, okay, what about this? So when we defined atelectasis, we said it'll be kind of triangular. It'll have demarcated, defined, well-defined borders. What do you think is here? Go for it. You won't be wrong. You'll be absolutely and, uh, There is small, small plural effusion there. Beautiful. Absolutely. Okay. So if that's a small plural effusion, what would this be? Would it should be compressing, you know, compressing the, you know, the, the lung. So yeah. probably atelectasis was uh, with compression of the plural effusion. Beautiful. It was a triangular image. Yeah. And what do you think this is? So this should be a consolidation. Yeah. Beautiful. So what I'm trying to demonstrate to you is that this is why in neonates you have to be very careful is that consolidation and a mnemonic kind of consolidation because you have dynamic air bronchograms coming in here can coexist with atelectasis. And really what you've got is a, a C profile throughout this lung with basically static air bronchograms as well as dynamic air bronchograms which are coming in and out over here. And then a syndemonic effusion which is basically causing what is compressive atelectasis. But can you see how the bronchograms here are completely static. So they can yes. coexist. And this is quite crucial that often they do in the majority of cases. And that's why I do not want you to get too stressed and too fixated about the fact that you're trying to say, well, is this consolidation? Well, it's actually a both. Now, this is just another example of clear cut atelectasis. And can you see the definitions here? So. Classically, this is the batwing sign. Uh, this is the liver. So 
this is not R1, R2 uh, at the moment. This is R2 actually, or maybe R1, R2 because of the probe. But clearly what you can see is the liver with the diaphragm and a very triangular margin, which has got tissue sign. This is a still image. Uh, so this is classical atelectasis for you. Uh, you don't have any mnemonic consolidations or consolidations that uh, you can see uh, that actually look like uh, they support the satellitesis. It's, it's, it's probably a significant low bar atelectasis. On the other hand, if you if you look at this in kind of the transverse view again, you can see how you pick up the atelectasis and there's just a blood vessel that goes below it. Uh, so really what you can see is that atelectasis in its own tends to, from your perspective, uh, present with usually a very kind of demarcated zone as opposed to what I would say is irregular mnemonic kind of consolidation. Now, what do we think about this? So, uh, Kirti, would you like to have a go at this? Okay, so we can see the parietal pleura, the ribs up there and pleural effusion. And then yeah. underneath that, I don't think we have visceral pleura here. And there is this parallel static bronchograms and also some dynamic bronchograms in the upper part, maybe that are coming in. Yeah, that one. So and it again, could be yeah. compressive atelectasis with yeah. some consolidation. And this is why I wanted to go through this with you. This is really, really important is that can you see the difference between a compressive atelectasis? versus an atelectasis that might be a focal area because of lack of tissue aeration. So, you know, again, much better visualized over here, very well demarcated. This probably is because of lack of aeration. But here, what you've got is compressive atelectasis. They can also have areas of static parallel air bronchograms. It's a very large area of kind of collapse atelectasis. But then you have dynamic air bronchograms where the air is actually being able to enter the lung. So this does not necessarily mean this is a mnemonic consolidation. This might just be compressive atelectasis, secondary to a pleural effusion, maybe a chirothorax, depending on the history. And that is why clinical correlation is so key. What about here, guys? So I'm going to get uh, uh, Kenaz. Do you want to comment on this? Yeah, so... I can't see the plural line or the... Okay, we start from the beginning. Can you see a bat sign? Yeah. 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 Okay. You can see these kind of rib shadows. Rib shadows, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what do we think is going on over here? So I can see some dynamic uh, bronchograms coming in. Beautiful. And... Uh, there are some parallel bronchograms as well. Very good. So, um, again, is this a mixed sort of a atelectasis? Very good. Very good. So, basically, you have no pleura established, so there's no aeration here. That's the diaphragm. I, it's very difficult to say whether, I don't think there's a pleural effusion there. I think that's just shadow. But really, this is just to say that this is a baby who's not read the book. And this kind of concept that when you have mnemonic consolidation, you know, dynamic air bronchograms in the presence of them means this is mnemonic consolidation. It's not always the case. And this is really important, guys. This is why it is so difficult from our perspective to differentiate atelectasis from collapse concussion. Sorry, I'm just going to let Atnafu in. Yeah, my apologies. Is my screen still shared? Yes. Yes. So just, can I just say that there is no single sign whose presence or absence confidently differentiates collapse from consolidation, from mnemonic consolidation, from atelectasis. This is pure experience. And what I would say is that in addition to pattern recognition, your clinical history is very important. What you would, obviously from your perspective, appropriately need to do is if you have compressive atelectasis, I mean, obviously if the baby's deteriorating, you might need to go up onto ventilation. 
but really you'll need to drain that in order to improve that lung recruitment. But if you have non-compressive atelectasis, as you can see in this particular situation with no pleural line, this might be a whole region of lung that's atelectatic. And really it's ventilation that you will have to increase. And I would be doing a lung ultrasound before and after. The fact that you have dynamic air bronchograms just means that you have air that's coming in and out of it. It doesn't necessarily mean this is a mnemonic consolidation, but clearly if you have a CRP that's 60 in a baby who's obviously quite sick, who's going up on an FiO2 uh, that's hitting 100%, or just looking at this ultrasound appearance, even before getting my CRP back, I, you know, if you start in antibiotics, which I would, I don't think I would criticize you. And that's why I would say that clinical correlation is very, very important. How does atelectasis in RDS differ? And you can have all elements. So, I mean, classically, this is a baby with very severe kind of RDS in A1. And what you've got is basically, again, you've got parietal visceral pleura with a small amount of fluid. I'll just show you that by the laser pointer that you can see over here. But you've then got these subpleural consolidations just below the pleural line. And then these areas that look poorly aerated. And basically what this is, is a large area of diffuse atelectasis. It's not a focal kind of a consolidation, but can you see how this is not picked up on the chest X-ray at all? And this is classically what is called occult atelectasis. It often exists with consolidations. So the deeper areas of the lungs with the subtural consolidations you have, uh, but you know, a, a lot of people also kind of describe this appearance over here, which is not too atelectatic as the snowflake sign, but this is just the right versus the left area. And obviously the left area is worse. Uh, so really from your perspective, this is how atelectasis with consolidation, subtural consolidations might look like in kind of respiratory distress syndrome. And then clearly what you've got in this particular situation is uh, in particular, uh, if you look at uh, kind of the left region, you know, the pool angle I can't see, but you really whether, worry whether there's fluid blunting that costophrenic angle. And you can see fluid with compressive atelectasis with what are kind of uh, bronchograms. I don't know if they're static or dynamic. Most over here, you've got a large fluid collection which is causing compressive atelectasis. But it's really difficult to say whether this is just pure RDS with a pool effusion or not. And that's the beauty of using lung ultrasound. It will just give you much more definition. Again, is the right worse? Is the left worse? You know, with the eye of faith, what do we think? Do we think on the x-ray, the left is worse or the right is worse? Anybody? Left? Yeah, but what is, what is the, the, the ultrasound tells you a completely different story. And that's why I would say ultrasound is just much more sensitive, uh, you know, with re regards to the diagnosis. Again, this is just another, you've lost your pleural margin here completely. You've got a subpleural consolidation. Now, in a baby who's about kind of uh, a few hours old, who's had surfactant, who might be oscillated with a bell-shaped chest, the question is whether you need to go up on ventilation at this particular point to recruit this lung versus, you know, people will often get confused. This is a shred sign because of the irregular nature of the consolidation. Now, if you have a two-hour-old baby with severe RDS who's had surfactant with lungs like this, you'd really, from your perspective, unless you have a prolonged rupture of membranes with GBS and a high CRP, I'd, I'd really be thinking, is this just lung that I need to recruit versus a, a shred sign? And I might increase ventilation and then repeat a lung ultrasound after that to kind of recruit this. But I'm just trying to emphasize how important it is to clinically correlate and why it's so important from our perspective. Uh, I would say to keep an open mind for all of these kind of clinical presentations. So let's see what you think about this one. So uh, Dr. Lena, would you like to have a look at and comment on this? Uh, so this is a, a, a preterm 25 weeker, uh, a three of life, increasing ventilation. So I can see plural fusion over here. And um, there is no pleura. Yep. It's like um, a tissue-like uh, um, consolidation. I don't see any, sorry, bronchograms uh, clearly here. Yep. So most likely this is a consolidation. Yep. No, 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 I would say. With consolidation, you're absolutely right. Yeah. So, and 
you know, I'm not too fussed about the, but the clear thing is you can't see an established poodle line here. At mm -hmm. And because you can't see an established poodle line, you're kind of in the situation where you have a C profile. But again, it's just to point out to you that these are sub plural consolidations that you can see over here, but you don't really have any kind of maybe a static air bronchial over there at the bottom, but not a lot. And again, this is a preterm baby. So these kind of uh, air bronchograms, which are not linear, uh, they're classically described as punctate. And uh, I'm just going to take my laser pointer off and click again so that you can see them. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So if I, that, that is basically a static air bronchogram that you can see over there, but you're right. There's not a lot in terms of static air bronchograms. These are sub consolidations, but no plural margin kind of established over here with a large C profile. I mean, this is basically a right upper lobe collapse consolidation. There's an element of atelectasis there. Uh, no shred sign, no fractal sign. What do we think about this one? Okay, so maybe mild plural fusion again. Uh, there is a plural, which is a plural, a plural which is sliding but thickened and uh, not irregular. I see yep. p, uh, sorry, b waves, and there is yep. sub plural consolidation in this area here. Uh, sorry, right side, yeah. Yeah, this is the left side. I'm just showing you one image. Oh, sorry, left side, yeah. yeah. Left side, what yeah. do we think about this region? You think this is atelectasis or just consolidation? It could be. Um, I don't see bronchograms. Very good. Plural is there. Very well established. So it was yeah. against, against atelectasis, uh, yeah. mostly. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yep. so possibly consolidation. Yeah, with a little bit of a plural effusion, not enough to mm -hmm. cause significant sub plural. Yeah. Atelectatic lung, yeah, because it's just a rim, it's a very small margin. Mm -hmm. So, in my debate over here is when I'm comparing these two, this is more likely to be consolidation with atelectasis, but here I've got an intact plural line. So, I mean, at the moment it's consolidation, but the question from my perspective is as this plural effusion gets bigger, what will happen? And that's where I would say serial ultrasound follow up, all of these things will help you make the diagnosis if you're confused. If not, get a chest x-ray and why not use the best of both worlds? Okay, this is, I mean, a barn door. Uh, what I would say is, again, uh, this is a case of a baby who, from our perspective, was quite sick, uh, had a high CRP. This is the right upper lobe. And again, what you can see is you can see quite an irregular plural line with what is an area of quite significant irregular subplural consolidation. This is, it's a fractal sign. And again, this would favor a mnemonic consolidation. Again, you want to put some kind of there to see what the vascularity is like. And if you get vessels in them, then you know this kind of appearance would favor more of a consolidation, possibly a mnemonic kind of appearance. And then what do we think about this? Dynamic uh, air programs you see yes. here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so, there is I can't just about the plural. You, sorry. It's because it's a transverse view yes. so that you're seeing. So what you're seeing is dynamic air bronchograms. But if you went back to looking at uh, your uh, your CRP and markers, I to kind of have fractal sign of this. Then I would I would worry that whether there's atelectasis or not, there's possibly an ammonia with kind of, you know, air bronchograms that are dynamic. Uh, that's how difficult it can be when you're trying to make a diagnosis. But uh, what do we think about this? Sujit, do you want to come in here? Uh, so, so you have, um, so you can see the bat sign, you can see uh, um, multiple plural uh, spaces. So the lung, I can't, uh, I can't appreciate a plural line. Oops. Very good. Very good. Uh, Absolutely. And, and there seems to be a lung pulse. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously very, you can see uh, on the Doppler, there is quite a lot of increased vascularity. Mm. And you're seeing uh, air bronchograms, which are dynamic. 
and static? Uh, you, uh, static, mm -hmm. more likely. Do you see a lot of dynamic yeah. air? Maybe they're in one position coming in and out and yeah. they're kind of parallel to each other. Yeah, yeah. So what do we do here? This is really, what do you think your diagnosis is? So I have static, so the static air bronchograms increased vascularity. I would, uh, with absent uh, <laughs> plural, plural uh, margin, it's a bit tricky. So I would probably correlate with the clinical markers and see. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I, I think if your clinical markers were completely normal, and let's say this is a 25-weeker who is 16 days old, who actually has a slight increase in oxygen requirement, looks clinically well, and you pick this up, uh, and this is basically the, the left lung, then, and this is what I want to raise with you, that that kind of dictum, that just because you have increased vascularity, this reflects consolidation. Well, this is probably a mix of consolidation in the bottom area with parallel air volumes, which is quite vascular because it's healing. Yeah. But clearly, because you can't see the plural line, there's an element of atelectasis like distally, but it doesn't have very well vascularized margins because the lungs are collapsed. So can you see how it can get very confusing? And I, I think what I'd say is what is very, very important is that you clinically correlate. So Questions. We're going to just pause for questions. Any questions, guys? Hello, can you go just go over the fractal sign again, please? Thank you. This image here, can you see this? Yes. Why do I think this is not atelectasis and this is fractal sign? Can you see the plural margin is established right to the, the top? Yes. Now, this is basically an irregular area below, right in the center here that you're seeing. And a fractal sign basically occurs because tissue is destroyed as opposed to being atelectated or less aerated. So it occurs because the irregular margins of the destroyed consolidation have fallen back. And because of these irregular margins, the sound waves that are generated by ultrasound basically reflect in multiple different directions over each other. So this is a classical fractal sign for you. But then you've got this area of what is compressive atelectasis. Again, it gives you a tissue sign. There's really an element of the consolidation going into it. And that's why you're getting some dynamic air bronchograms. Compressive atelectasis is always an easier diagnosis to make as a trying to make a diagnosis of tissue-based atelectasis in the lung, which might be because the tube is down the right main bronchus. I mean, this could also be a clinical presentation of aspiration, a baby who's aspirated milk, right main bronchus, right upper lobe is collapsed. When I experience like this, I'm going to a little bit more on that right upper lobe. And can you see how, how mm -hmm. triangular it sees you can see these parallel air bronchograms but i can't see any established plural there can you see there's no established plural there whereas okay. when i when i look over here can you see how there's established plural there can you see that yes yes so fractal sign will usually have those those margins and the, again you're putting a number of signs together to try and make that diagnosis you're clinically correlating what I would do in this situation is I would pull the tube back and I would then do a repeat ultrasound to see if it's expanded. Because if it's not, or if this baby is sick, or if there's any worry, I'd be putting this baby on antibiotics. I wouldn't risk it. Often the regions associated around, in and around like this, will show a B profile because they're less well aerated than other regions. So this region that you see over here basically is a B profile. If you if if this is mechanical, you pull the tube back and it expands. You notice that this is completely disappeared, and you have well aerated lung that you can see here in the lower region over here as well. Now that would classically be mechanical. That reverses. You have a baby who's clinically well, whose optimants are better, who's not toxic. You know, you did bloods. The CRP is normal. Well, this would not fit within a monic kind of a consolidation. 
On the other hand, something like this, I would be quite quite anxious if this, say for example, I I pulled the tube back, this didn't resolve and it stayed as bad as this, as regular as this with the dense to sign. Now, if I have a fractal sign that I can see, I can't see one here, but I'll follow this up. You know, the, the question again is, is this mnemonic or, or Now, if you have a fractal sign with it that you can see over here, or you have dynamic scare bronchograms, then that favors a mnemonic kind of a consolidation. And while these are supportive, they're not pathognomonic. They are not highly specific. And that's why I would say that eventually what you've got to do is clinically correlate, look at your blood markers and then decide. Uh, lung pulse, let's show you lung pulse. So, lung pulse. So this is lung pulse. Can you see the lung pulse there? This is classical lung pulse. There's no sliding, but you can see the, the bobbing motion of the lungs in this particular slide. So that is lung pulse for you. Complete atelectasis is associated with good, better visible lung pulse. Small areas of atelectasis close to the heart will also show it. What I would say is that at the end of the day, I think what you really need to do is clinically correlate. And what we'll be doing is that, you know, we'll be practicing with a lot of cases now that I've kind of taken this to kind of give you a feel of how better to diagnose it. I'm not going to do these cases at the moment just because we're coming to nine and I want to let you go. Any last questions? Alok, can I just ask for a deep endotracheal tube, once yeah. you pull it out, how quickly can you go back and check for resolution of the atelectasis with ultrasound? So it depends on really how dense the consolidation is, uh, how long it's been there, the, the clinical background. You know, if this is a baby with respiratory distress syndrome who's just had a fresh tube where the lungs are not too kind of chronically affected, that might actually take place within about half an hour, 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, I will present a case maybe next time to kind of show you. Uh, but I think if you have chronic lung disease and you have a large lower consolidation, yeah. that obviously will need more pressure. It'll need a longer period of time. And clinically, what I'm really looking for is clinical improvement first. Yeah. I would base my lung ultrasound timing based on the clinical appearance of the baby. And if my baby is rapidly clinically improved, yeah. and I've seen a very large consolidation improve quite quickly after oscillation, then really I'll go and do my lung ultrasound quite quickly. But on the other hand, if I've got significant needs still, respiratory needs, if I have no improvement, I might still go and do the lung ultrasound because I might be missing something. Yeah. So what I'd say is there's no set kind of timing, but clinical improvement of the baby is a good marker. Okay. No clinical improvement is also a good marker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Lovely. I'm going to say thank you to all of you. God bless you. I think the quality of your images is absolutely beautiful. I'd say for those of you who uh, have presented today, I'll be doing sign-off forms for you. They're beautiful images. You know, there's very little I have to kind of add. And I, I can't thank you guys enough for, you know, the education that I'm having in this process. So have a good evening, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Bye. Bye.